Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Russian Grand Prix preview here on the Backmarkers F1 Show channel. If you don't already know, my name is Chris, and I'm going to be bringing you all the information and knowledge, rumors, and news you need to know heading into round 10 of the Formula One World Championship this Sunday around the Sochi Autodrome. Now, I got to be a little bit honest with you guys, and I'm going to say that this isn't one of my favorite tracks on the calendar, so forgive me if I don't have too much excitement over this track, but I am keeping an open mind and fingers crossed that we are going to get a good race this weekend, and we've also gotten a lot of unexpected things to happen in 2020, so you never know. We might actually get an interesting and exciting Russian Grand Prix. But anyways, regardless of that, let's dive right into all the circuit info, tires, hot laps, rumors, and everything else you need to know for the Russian Grand Prix. So we're going to start with the circuit info. Now, whether you're new to the Sochi Autodrome or you already know it, we're going to go through just a little bit of the basic information anyways. Now, Sochi is one of the newer generation tracks on the calendar. First race was held here in 2014. It's a 5.8 kilometer circuit, one of the longer ones in the year 2020. It's got nine turns to the right, five to the left. The race will be held over 53 laps. We've got two DRS zones. Now, DRS is going to be pretty powerful around here. We've got, of course, the DRS on the long turn one straight, which isn't really a straight, by the way. And we've also got the second DRS zone between turn 10 and turn th 13, excuse me, which is another long and powerful DRS straight. Now, this track is basically made up of long straights that aren't really straights. If you look at the track map just beside me and above me, you'll see that the straight on turn one really isn't straight. And then the straight after turn 10, 11, 12, and then going into 13 isn't really straight either. And then after you come into sector three, which is a lot of kind of awkward, twisty, 90 degree corners, that makes it really difficult for overtaking. So I don't expect to see very much overtaking going on there in sector three. Now let's get into a little bit of tire talk here as Pirelli are going to be bringing the C3, C4, and C5 compounds to this race. First time we're actually gonna be seeing the very softest tire in Pirelli's range. Now Pirelli characterizes this track as really easy on the tires because the circuit is track surface is very smooth. It's kind of a hybrid of a street circuit, so you kind of get that low grip need for the softest tire, which is why we're going to be bringing the C5 here. But it's not very abrasive on the tire. Pirelli ranks it only as tire stress as two, which is pretty low, so they're not going to be expecting too much degradation to come. Now, one of the interesting things about this track is the long left-hander of turn three. That actually has a 750 meter constant radius, and that really loads up the right front tire. So drivers are going to have to be able to manage that throughout a race. Also interesting to note that last year, Pirelli brought one range softer, or excuse me, one range harder to last year's 2019 Russian Grand Prix. So that would have been the C2, C3, and the C4. And if you remember that race, it was a one-stop strategy that was successful for most drivers. So another interesting thing just to keep in the back of your mind, whether drivers will be able to make the one-stop work with the softer tires, or if we're going to see more two-stops in this race. Now, which areas are we going to see the most action? As I mentioned before, and you can probably check out in the track map, track map as well, turn one is going to be a big action zone as well, especially on the first lap of the race. That toe is so, so important and key at the Sochi Autodrome. And then also when you're looking at the other parts of the circuit, turn three, it is a possible overtaking move. If you remember back to 2018, Charles Leclerc made a beautiful move on the outside. And that's also where Hamilton got by Fettel going into turn four. So if you got a good aerodynamic car under you, you could possibly make that move work. Now, when we look at other areas of the track, again, turn three, or excuse me, sector three, I really don't expect many overtakes to happen. It's very twisty, 90 degree corners, not a lot of room for two cars. And then obviously in sector two, the big one being turn 10 all the way to the rundown to turn 13. If you got DRS active, you could also pick up a little bit of a slipstream going into 13. Got to be careful though as well. We've seen some big accidents there in the past. Carlos Sainz, for example, a few years ago and a spin from Alex Albon last year. So that's another area for action there. Other than that, I don't expect too many overtakes to be happening in the course of the race, but hopefully I'm wrong and we'll get to see a record set maybe at Sochi for the amount of overtakes. So I'm going to put on my meteorological hat, I don't even know if I said that right, for just a second and take a look at the weather in Sochi. Now, it's a beautiful part of Russia. Russia has a lot of gorgeous landscapes, but Sochi especially being one close to the Black Sea, obviously where they held the 2014 Winter Olympics as well. Good news for the race, I guess, or maybe if you were hoping for rain, bad news, but it's going to be a sunny and clear weekend. It's going to be a high of 29 degrees Celsius come race day on Sunday. Now, that's not with counting the Humidex, so that might go up into the 30s. Track temperature will probably be hovering around the 40 degree temperature mark. So we should be expecting a pretty hot race for this time of year in September in Russia. So no rain expected. Clear all weekend long for this weekend's race. 
All right, let's get into one of my favorite parts, actually, of the previews, looking at all the news and rumors heading into this weekend's race. We've had a, a week off since the, the race previously, so no back-to-back. So we got a little bit of news to catch up on. But the biggest one I'm going to start off with is the one that's been making the most news in the last 48 hours. And that's Formula One will have a new CEO starting in 2021. Chase Carey will be stepping down and is being replaced by the ex-Ferrari team boss, Stefano Domenicale. Now, I'm sure the name is familiar to most F1 fans, but if you're not sure who he is, he was the Ferrari team principal dating back to 2008. He was then appointed to replace Jean Tot, and he was the team principal there in the Fernando Alonso era. He's since moved on to be the current CEO of Lamborghini, and obviously he's had vast experience in Formula One as well, even dating back before he became team principal. Now, if you remember, Chase Carey took over for Bernie Ecclestone, sort of late in 2016, going into 2017. So he's been here for a couple of years now, but will now be stepping down to make way for Stefano Domenicale. Now, obviously, interestingly enough, people have been making the, not necessarily jokes, but pointing out the connections that Domenicale has, obviously, to Ferrari being the former team principal, Ross Braun being another former Ferrari employee now in a big position in Formula One, and obviously Jean Tott with the FIA, although he'll be stepping away. But I don't know, maybe this will bring back Ferrari's illegal engine. You never know. But of course, Domenicali has been away from Ferrari for quite some time now. I know Ferrari were pretty upset with the idea of Toto Wolff possibly becoming the next boss of Formula One. But of course, he's still the team principal at Mercedes. So a little bit of a different scenario. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this appointment. I think Domenicali is highly respected among the F1 paddock. And of course, he knows a lot of the ins and outs of Formula One as well. So a little bit different than Chase Carey. So we'll see how, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll see how it plays out in the years to come. Next bit of news is actually regarding a potential new track and new race for the 2021 calendar. We've had a lot of those this season, but this is a brand new one potentially going to happen in Saudi Arabia of all places for 2021. Now, I'm really sure that this has absolutely nothing to do with any financial motive or gains I think this always just has to do with the pure, rich history that Saudi Arabia has with Formula One and the potential great racing that this track will deliver to us, right? Anyways, I think a street race is being planned in the Middle Eastern country's second largest city of Jeddah, which is home to around 3.5 million people. The city had previously been tipped to host a one-off race next year prior to F1's relocation to an ambitious, purpose-built facility, which is being built as we speak. But of course, the delays with the pandemic and everything have resulted in a delay of that project. So they want to just put in a temporary street circuit to be put on the calendar for 2021. Now, the reason why I make that financial and money joke, for many reasons, obviously, you can figure out your own, but it's because Formula One is keen to cement its ties with Saudi Arabia after signing a lucrative long-term sponsorship with the Saudi Arabian big oil company, Aramco. Everybody loves big oil companies, don't they? Now, of course, you'll probably notice the Aramco signage that has been embroidered all over the F1 Grand Prix weekends. And it's been also the, the big sponsor of an individual race like Hungary, for example. So Aramco is a global partner of Formula One that started in 2020. So obviously you can see the big reason why there might be a race in Saudi Arabia. So again, comment section is open down below what you would think of a potential race in Saudi Arabia. So getting back to this weekend's race, in the paddock, we got some news that Netflix will be recording Mercedes of all teams this weekend in Russia. Now, think back to last year, how well that went for Mercedes at the 2019 German Grand Prix. So hopefully that will bring some more drama to their weekend. But it's significant also for the fact that Lewis Hamilton could equal Michael Schumacher's total win record of 91 wins this weekend. So pretty big moment, especially that probably why Netflix picked out this race in particular. So I think that we could get some cool footage to come from that. That is a new season that will be happening, that will be released most likely early next year. So that will be season three of Drive to Survive. So Netflix recording with Mercedes this weekend in Russia. Now moving on to Ferrari, they are going to be bringing some small upgrades to the Sochi Autodrome. But if you're a Ferrari fan, don't get your hopes up too much. There aren't going to be any massive upgrades that's going to result in a big gain of performance, just little ones here. I'm going to just take a quote from Mattia Bonato, who said, There will be small upgrades, but this will not change the big picture. I think we are at the moment out of pace in the race, and we are somehow wearing the tires too much. So the upgrades will not be the ones that address it. We need to review projects with the view to 2021. I think it will take some more time to do it. So clearly, they've obviously moved the focus away from this season as they're not going to get much out of it. And hopefully, you're going to work on some upgrades for 2021 that could see them move up the table just a little bit. They're probably not going to be fighting for wins anytime soon until the new rules come in. But at the very least, they can get themselves back in the midfield fight for next season. So it's a pretty good idea, I think, to be trying to run these test runs and bits on the car this season to see if they can go and develop something positive for 2021. 
Speaking of Ferrari, and actually their last world champion, that's right, I'm talking about Kimi Raikkonen. Pretty crazy, actually, to think that that was all the way back in 2007, Raikkonen, the last Ferrari world champion. But anyways, assuming that Raikkonen starts this Sunday's Russian Grand Prix, he will equal Rubens Barrichello's record for most starts in Formula One history with 322. Of course, I don't think that Raikkonen really cares all that much about the records, but we certainly do, and we're really appreciative of Kimi Raikkonen. The fact that he's in his 40s and he's still racing is quite amazing and doesn't look like he's done yet. So he'll be breaking that record most likely in the next coming races. So along with Hamilton possibly equaling Schumacher's record, more history to be made this weekend in the Russian Grand Prix. All right, guys, so that about does it for all the news and rumors that I've picked out in the last couple of days. If I happen to miss anything or something breaks after the release of this video, feel free to drop it down in the comments below. We'll make sure to pin it or just share it on our social media at TBMF1. Well, what do I think is going to happen this weekend? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but if I had to place a lot of money on something, I'd say that Mercedes are a pretty good shoe in to win this weekend's race again, barring any Netflix type drama like in Germany 2019. But this is a track that Mercedes have absolutely and utterly dominated since its inception in 2014, and I don't really expect that to change as well. Lewis Hamilton's coming in extra motivated, being able to equal Schumacher's record, so I think that he's my pick to win the race. Um, and I think Valtteri Bottas also is going to put a really good challenge into him as Bottas has really enjoyed this track as of late and has kind of become a master around this track. Of course, we'll have to keep in mind the team games as well. As you remember in 2018, this was the infamous Valtteri, it's James race. So whether that comes back or not, we'll see. But Mercedes is going to be tough to beat this weekend. Now, with the upgrades that I mentioned to Ferrari, it might be good enough to bring them back closer to the midfield fight instead of following, instead of fighting on the outskirts of the top 10. So maybe they'll be able to sneak in with a top, top six finish with Leclerc. Leclerc has seemed a lot more comfortable with the car this season than Fettel has. So possibly Ferrari might be able to put a little bit of a fight back on, but it's going to be really tough for them because of how deficit they have with that engine. Their engine has been absolutely awful this year. So I think it's going to be extra difficult around this track, especially in sector one and two. They're going to lose out a ton of time, not only in qualifying, but in the race as well. But another team that actually had upgrades that really worked out well for them was Racing Point in Mugello. Now, Lance Stroll was running new components on the car that really looked like it was going to help them because they were running in podium position for the majority of the race. Of course, he had that unfortunate failure that led to his massive crash, and that really damaged the new parts. So I'm not exactly sure whether they'll be able to run those new parts on Perez's car or both cars this weekend. But regardless of the fact, Racing Point, again, have been looking really strong the last couple of races, and they're right there just to take over that third spot in the constructors. And also another team too, Renault. Renault and Daniel Ricciardo have seen to really found a sweet spot in terms of car performance the last couple of weekends. Ricciardo had a P6 in Italy, P4 in Belgium, and then another P4 last time out in Mugello. So this isn't a high downforce track, and they typically have a good low downforce setup. So I think Renault could be another team that surprises us possibly and could sneak into the top five. Now, the biggest question for me this weekend is what can Max Verstappen and Red Bull do? This is a big question for me, as Verstappen especially has had a couple of rough races with reliability problems in Italy, and then obviously the one in Mugello as well that screwed up his start. So hopefully Honda has figured out the start issues with Red Bull, and they've worked together to resolve those issues because the start is key here around Sochi. The toe is a massive, massive factor in the opening lap of the race. Obviously, as we saw last year with Ferrari, even go back to the 2017 race when Bottas jumped Vettel at the start, the toe is really important. So it's kind of almost in a way that pole position is sort of a disadvantage around this track. Verstappen has typically been qualifying P3 this year at the worst P4, starting on the second row of the grid. So that is actually a pretty good place to be considering how long the rundown to turn one is. So if Red Bull can figure out those issues, get a good start and utilize that slipstream and toe, they might be able to jump both Mercedes's. Whether they'll be able to stay ahead after that, I'm not sure. But I think that Albon also coming into this race has a little bit more confidence coming off of his first career podium. So if he can kind of be that second rear gunner to Max, hopefully they'll be able to take the fight to Mercedes and make it an entertaining race. And as I mentioned before, guys, quality mode ban, again, is going to be really interesting for me to see because since it's been instituted at the Italian Grand Prix, Mons is a little bit of a weird circuit in terms of how effective and how much the teams have to utilize the toe in qualifying. Mugello, obviously, it's a high downforce circuit, not a lot of straights, so we didn't really see much of the effect of the quality mode ban. I think we'll see more of a representation of how much this will affect the teams like Mercedes or like Red Bull 
with this Sochi Autodrome. Sector one, obviously, sector two, like I talked about with the long straights and the DRS zones. So this will be more of an accurate representation of how much the teams have lost or how much they've gained on Mercedes in terms of this quality mode ban. So just something personally I'm going to be looking out for at this weekend's Russian Grand Prix. Now, with that all said, those are my predictions, and that'll about do it for me in this Russian Grand Prix preview. Now it's your turn. Jump down in the comments below. Let me know what you're expecting, what you think is going to happen in this weekend's race. Comment your top three podium finishers. And again, as I mentioned, any news or any other thoughts that you have, we'd love to hear from you. We always try and answer as many comments as we can. We can't get to everybody, unfortunately, but feel free to leave them in the comments below. Of course, as always, follow us on social media at TBMF1 Show across Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We've got our own website, TBMF1Show.com. We've got extra written content there. Our podcasts all available for download there in audio form as well, and all of our YouTube stuff posted. And if you'd like to support our channel, see our continued growth on YouTube and other platforms as well, find in the description below. Feel free to donate if you'd like. If you can't, not a problem at all. Our content will always be free. But if you got some Lawrence Stroll type money, burning a hole in your pocket, feel free to support us a little bit. We always appreciate it, guys. Thank you for watching again on the Backmarkers F1 show, and we'll see you after the Russian Grand Prix. Take care.